Okay, so here we have an individual on a skateboard uh, just standing there initially. So he's got a mass of m2 and he's standing there with initial velocity of zero. And some object, for some unknown reason, is thrown at this person. And um, we know the mass of the object, we know its initial velocity. So it comes in, hits him, and bounces back off with its final velocity, which we also know. Now all of this happens in, uh, in time t. Okay, so we know he was standing still, we know his mass, we know the mass of the object, we know the object's initial and final velocity, and we know how long this took. Uh, the question is, we want to find the acceleration of the skateboarder due to this collision or during this collision. Okay, so uh, I said collision, so you should be thinking momentum, and you're right, it is a momentum problem, but it's not exactly uh, the type that we're used to. We're not going to use the conservation of momentum in this case. For one, because, well, all momentum conservation can give us is, well, it could solve for a momentum, or it solve, could solve for a mass or a velocity. I'm asking for an acceleration, so that doesn't really help. So this one takes a little bit of thoughts, a little unusual. Let's, what, what if I had happened to ask what is, was the force on the skateboarder? Well, maybe without too much thought, we would, could recall that, among other things, force is equal to the impulse or change in momentum over time. Uh, time. Like so. So, knowing that, and then also recalling that force is equal to mass times acceleration in general, if we find the force, then we should be able to find the skateboarder's acceleration. Okay, so uh, we can find the force based on, we can find the force on the ball, right? The force on the ball is going to be equal to, let's see, force on the ball will be equal to the change in momentum of the ball. So that's final minus initial divided by the time. And so final minus initial is going to be, that's m1v1 final minus m1v1 initial all over time. And if I'm inclined, I could uh, factor out that m1, m1 over t, v1 minus, uh, oops, minus v1 initial. So that's the force on the ball. But if we remember our Newton's laws, the force that the cat exerts on the ball will be the same um, as the force that the ball exerts on the cat. Oops, I gave away that it was a cat. Anyways, so uh, the equal and opposite, but well, we know what the direction of the acceleration is, so let's just say we're looking for the magnitude. The magnitude of the force on the ball is the same as the magnitude of the force on the skateboarder, which I'll just call F. Yeah, I'll call Fs for skateboarder. So in that case, the force of the skateboarder, magnitude anyways, is equal to m1 over t minus v1 initial. Now remember, don't let these variables scare you. If I had given us numbers, we could plug them in, and we would just know a number for the f for the force. But also, we know that force on the skateboarder is equal to the mass, oh, I called m2 earlier, so mass 2 times acceleration. So force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? Well, uh, if I'm looking for the acceleration, just ignore this part here. And we're looking for acceleration, so I'll divide over m2. And I get, I don't really want that, and I get a is equal to m1 over m2 um, v1 minus v1 initial over t. I don't know why I wrote it like that. It doesn't matter. So there we have it. That is the acceleration um, during the collision, right? He will be speeding up because he's being hit by this ball. And so we used that force is equal to the change in momentum over time, or you may be familiar with force is equal to impulse over time. But remember, impulse is just a change in momentum. I have no idea why change in momentum gets its own name, but there you go. So we used impulse in this problem uh, to find the force, and then we used force to find the acceleration. 
So there you have it. There's definitely a collision involved, but in this case, we didn't, uh, we didn't look at before and after. We could have found his final velocity after the collision if we felt like it, but that wasn't asked. And um, another good hint, I guess, uh, to identify that this isn't exactly a momentum conservation problem is that they gave us the time and they asked for the acceleration, but they wouldn't give you the time in a regular collision problem where you use conservation of momentum, unless they're trying to trick you, of course. There we go.